Grace and peace, and welcome to another episode of Your Week with St. Luke's, our weekly podcast at St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Orlando. Our hope is that these podcasts will be an opportunity for for each of you and all of us to take a deeper dive into the text for the week ahead as we all seek to learn, live, love, and lead our lives in and through the grace and love of Jesus Christ. My name is Jad Denmark, and I'm one of the pastors at St. Luke's. And we are excited for this year ahead, this year 2024, where our theme all year long will be purposeful. And last week, we started a new series, Life on Purpose, Lessons from Lasso. And this week, we will move, continue to move forward with an, another lesson from Lasso. Last week was that to be in a relational life, and we looked at how Jesus called other people to be in relationship and ministry with him. This week, the lesson from Lasso is be curious, not judgmental. And our text is from a different gospel. It is from Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. And I'm going to read to you here uh, that, that text from the Common English Bible translation. So hear these words, Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. Jesus, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town. A man named Zacchaeus, a ruler among tax collectors, was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When Jesus came to that spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay in your home today. So Zacchaeus came down at once, happy to welcome Jesus. Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner? Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Lord, look, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone, I repay them four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today, the same as before, salvation has come to this household because he too is a son of Abraham. The human one came to seek and save the lost. Here, this text, first of all, it is uniquely Lucan. It's unique to Luke and only Luke. This story about Zacchaeus, the chief tax collector, who, who Jesus says, "You're coming, into, I'm coming to your house, it's not found in the other synoptic gospels, uh, Matthew and Mark, and it's not found in, in the fourth gospel, John. It's unique to Luke. It's only here. And its place here is interesting. It's, it's, it's among other stories where Jesus is getting to the, the same point, this, this larger theme of Luke's gospel, faithfulness, righteousness, and the kingdom of God. So in verse 1, we have the setting. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through town. Now, we've already been set in Jericho in the previous chapters, and so we're being reminded that this is still happening, or maybe this, this story being unique to Luke, is Luke is inserting it to, to his narrative about Jesus. Jericho uh, is east of Jerusalem and, and just north of the Dead Sea, not too far, a bit further west of the Jordan River and close to the site that's believed uh, that maybe Jesus, that's where Jesus was baptized. So right away in this quick first verse, we, we have the setting. We're being reminded of the setting, Jericho, as Jesus is passing, it says, through. Now in verse 2, Luke introduces this new character, Zacchaeus. And we are told that he is, in many of the translations, a, a chief tax collector. Now, tax collect, collection uh, in the first century Roman Empire was an interesting thing. 
See, what we know is Roman authorities would sell the tax area or the opportunity for other people to collect the taxes. That way the Romans didn't actually have to do it. They would just get the money for it. And actually they would make more money because they would sell the opportunity and then they would be given the taxes that they could take care of back at Rome. And so they would sell this, this opportunity of a tax area to, to a local who is what we translate here, a, a chief tax collector, a, an authority, who would then hire out other tax collectors to go to different spots and walk around different parts of the area and travel and, and collect typically whatever they can from the people in the hopes that they collect enough to, to pay Rome for that, that season and time and, and to make a profit. And this is what Zacchaeus is and does, a chief tax collector. It is one of the most despised members of the community because of the greed and corruption that is implicit within this role and this, this system. But we also learn something else in verse 3 and 5 about Zacchaeus. He is a curious man. He was trying to see who Jesus was, the text says, but being a short man, he, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed up on a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. You know, curiosity kills the cat, but in this instance, I, I think curiosity creates opportunities. Let's keep going. Verse 5, Jesus sees Zacchaeus in the tree and invites him to come down. He invites himself to dinner at Zacchaeus' home. And curiosity, intrigue. Yeah, sometimes it can get us in trouble. But for Zacchaeus, it got him dinner with Jesus. I wonder what opportunities curiosity might have for you. I wonder what, wondering how that might open doors for you with, with other people, um, with opportunities to be a part of the kingdom of God, maybe even have dinner with Jesus. Well, and verse 6 tells us that Zacchaeus is happy, joyful, other translations say, in accepting this opportunity to host Jesus, this great prophet, in his very home. Dr. Luke Timothy Johnson, who is my New Testament professor, notes that the hospitality here is obvious. See, Luke uses the same verb as was used for Martha's reception, receiving of Jesus. And in fact, this verb here for welcome is used quite frequently in Luke. And the participle, cheerion, is translated as an adverb, that, that joyfully or happily. And Dr. Johnson says this suggests a deeper resonance of the messianic joy, this, this joy of the anointed one coming, the reign of the anointed one and the joy that it brings that, that is repeated throughout Luke's narrative, Luke's telling of Jesus Christ. This curiosity that, that Zacchaeus has it leads to great joy and hospitality. And it's juxtaposed with the response of those who are watching in verse 7. They begin to, to mutter, your translation might say, or grumble. Everyone who saw this grumbled, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. This reaction it's quite typical and even expected of the, the scribes and Pharisees that, that Luke describes in his narrative. But these aren't necessarily scribes and Pharisees. At least they're not singled out or identified here or even in the surrounding text. It's pretty clear that everyone, Pontes, who saw, responded this way. This includes the disciples, and the greater crowd, as well as those who are the opponents of Jesus here in Luke, that, that are following Jesus closely. Curiosity, judgmental. Well, in verse 8 through 10, we have a fascinating conversation between Jesus and Zacchaeus. 
that that Zacchaeus wants Jesus to know that that while the perception uh, of him is corruption, he is in fact generous to those who are without. In fact, Zacchaeus uses a, this a present tense, which is typically translated as, as a as a present progressive present progressive now and moving i'm giving half of my possessions to the four right i'm giving half of its present and ongoing this indicates that 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 what he describes is is repeated is that ongoing customary practice it's not a single spontaneous act of generosity it is part of him as part of Zacchaeus and his intentional his purposeful living and being he gives alms which in Luke is the true sign of righteousness. Actually, throughout Luke, in in chapter 6, verse 30 and 31 and 38, in chapter 11, verse 41, in in chapter 12, verse 33, in chapter 16, verse 9, and 18, verse 22 and 29, all of it Luke is saying that the true sign of righteousness is the giving of things to those without. It's that, that rising up of the valley and bringing down low of the mountains. Well, the cheating statement that Zacchaeus makes is interesting too. And if I have cheated anyone, I repay them four times as much. There's there's two observations here for us. First, the the conditional aspect of this sentence uh, that that sometimes we read in English does not really apply uh, that he is committing extortion, that he is doing this ongoing corruption. The, the, the tense here is more like, if I discover that I have, if I learn that that I've been a part of this system, right, then, right, it's not as like, is this happening? He's like, when I discover, this is what I do. And the second part of it is that this, this four-time restitution This four times of of paying back isn't just plucked out of thin air. It it is biblical, found in Exodus 22. You see, Zacchaeus not only knows his Bible, what's even more important is he knows how to apply it. And he does. He actually applies it. And Jesus responds, Today, salvation has come to this household or another, another way of translating it, salvation has happened in this house. Salvation. In Luke, it's actually a unique word. Uh, other than the infancy account, right? Jesus' infancy account in Luke chapter 1, this is the only other use of that specific word salvation, soteria, in Luke. Salvation happens in this sentence in the reception of the prophet, that's how Zacchaeus sees him, in the reception of, of Jesus, in that, that visit, and the attitude that Zacchaeus has towards possession, the giving of possessions for the poor that those without will have. And Jesus says that Zacchaeus too is a child of Abraham. The Greek here is literally son of Huios. Jesus here, he includes Zacchaeus, the curious one, among the people of the blessing that's referenced in Luke chapter 1, verse 55, even though by his trade he was despised by his community. Jesus includes him into the people of God's blessing. The key is. His actions show him to be a person open to the kingdom of God. This draws us back to John the Baptist's words in Luke when he announced the fruits of repentance, that God can raise up children of Abraham even from these stones. Well, as with with any text, there's a lot we can unpack. But for our time this week, and and thinking about the lesson from Lasso, be curious, not judgmental, we find this, this new 
character new to Luke, Zacchaeus, who was curious, juxtaposed with the people of the community who are judgmental. Zacchaeus, in his curiosity, encounters the Jesus, not only that he's looking for, but the Jesus that he's open to finding. The community, in their judgmental attitudes and responses, find themselves left with only that, judgment and dismay. Zacchaeus is filled with joy and hospitality. Those who judge are left empty. So what what speaks to you about this unique encounter? I'm sure uh, there are many of you who have read this text numerous times before. It's a great children's story in children's Bibles. And while that may be the case, uh, I I wonder beyond the immediate lesson, the familiar lesson, I wonder what new and fresh might come to your heart and mind as you read it and talk about it with your small group and your Bible study and your your friends and family. What, What is this text? say it means to be faithful and righteous. Zacchaeus claimed to be faithful and righteous, a son of Abraham, because of his generous spirit and how he applies his life and faith with purpose. How can you apply your life and faith with purpose? How can you live with more purpose. And what do you find yourself being more judgmental about or being just simply judgmental about? What are you curious about? And how can you take your judgmental tendencies and become more curious? Because at least in this text, curiosity opens doors that leads to joyful hospitality with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, friends, I I pray that this will be a beginning of a powerful conversation, that you'll read this text a a couple times together, read them in other translations and have a, a powerful conversation as we prepare to gather together on Sunday for worship and we think about this lesson from Lasso and in this encounter that Zacchaeus and Jesus have together. Blessings to you all.